Hello everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss right to health and how it is protected by the constitution of India. As already discussed in my previous video that right to health is not directly guaranteed as a fundamental right. Rather it is protected through various articles. For example in today's video we will see the interpretation of article 21 with respect to right to health. We will also discuss article 39, article 47, article 48A and article 51A of the constitution of India. So as we all know that man has certain basic essential rights, some natural and inalienable rights of freedoms and it is a duty of the state to protect and preserve these basic essential natural and inalienable rights in an effective manner right it is the obligation of the state it is a duty of the state right when we talk about a welfare state now see the modern trend of guaranteeing fundamental rights right it can be traced you know back to the united states of america's constitution right it gave actually a concrete shape to human rights okay and in modern times we have universal declaration of human rights and so on so many declarations that you know provides that fundamental rights they you know they represent a trend in modern democratic think thinking right so coming back to india the fundamental rights they guarantee certain basic civil rights and freedoms and the, these rights and freedoms are essential to human rights right in the form of fundamental rights under part 3 of the constitution of india under part 4 which we say you know director principles of state policies right so let's start with article 21 now see article 21 says that no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except according to the procedure established by law see article 21 assures every person you know life and personal liberty and in article 21 we all know that the term life it has been given an expansive meaning in fact even the term personal liberty has a very wide meaning right uh, if we all uh, go back to the constitution classes right then we uh, there is a very famous case of mann versus illinois right so justice field in this case of mann versus illinois right this is a united states case he said that life means something more than you know mere animal existence not only physical existence but you know the quality of life you know something more than an animal existence a quality of life right that is given to everyone in fact in francis Cor corvelli versus delhi case also justice bhagwati he also said that we all have a right to live with human dignity right human beings should be provided with bare necessities of life like nutrition shelter clothing food good health right and in many judgments the judiciary has interpreted these things that we all have a right to live with human dignity we should always have a life that is worth living right more than an animal existence in p ratnam versus union of india also the supreme court said the same that we all have a right to live with human dignity with human respect a life that is worth living right so in article 21 this term personal liberty right if we interpret personal liberty then you know it does not mean liberty of the body only right uh, not only freedom from physical restraint but it is something more than that right in kharak singh case it was expressed that personal liberty means something more than physical restraint right and then again article 21 says that you know no one shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except according to procedure established by law so a procedure established by law that means a procedure that is fair that is just and right right and law we we are very well versed with the term law as per the constitution of india now let's discuss the extended views of article 21 in the you know indian constitutional jurisprudence let's talk about right to health okay see right to health uh you know 
that you know a person's health should be such that the person is free from any kind of disease right whether it be physical mental right a person should have a good health as it is already said said health is wealth so right to medical care is also one of the facets of right to health right because see a person who is ill right a person who is suffering from any disease it is a right of that person that he should be properly given admission to hospital right whether it is a government hospital and proper medical facilities proper care should be taken of that patient right article 14 says that you know there should be equality of law there should be equal equal protection of laws and similarly article 15 etc we have already seen that you know there should be non discrimination there should not be any kind of discrimination between the rich or poor the hospitals nursing homes the nursing centers care institutions they should not discriminate between the rich and the poor right even if a person is not able to pay to pay the fees right immediately a hospital you know they cannot deny admission to a person who is suffering from any kind of illness disease right we all have a right to you know access to medicine medical care and it is also the ethical duty of doctors nurses paramedic uh, paralegal uh, medical pro persons you know providing uh, medical services and assistance aiding persons right so they should provide proper medical care and services to such people right they cannot be denied of this right right because under article 21 right to medical care is one of the you know extended view of article 21 and article 21 guarantees right to medical care okay similarly we have directive principles of state policy right articles 36 to 51 talks about directive principles of state policy so to achieve you know amelioration of the socio economic conditions of the masses to be a welfare state the indian constitution talks about directive principles of state policy right they promote prosperity well being of the people right article 39 clause a it talks about right to livelihood of people right the there are certain principles of policy that are supposed to be followed by the state right the state will secure you know good health to the workers it will look towards the strength of the workers men women tender age of children they should not be abused right and you know article 39 clause when it talks about right to livelihood that means a livelihood you know a proper livelihood that is also associated with proper health services health facilities of individuals that are living in the society right so article 39 also guarantees that we have a proper we should have a proper right to health right now see we have article 39 clause b that talks about distributive economic system article 39 clause c right so it means that the aim is to use material resources in such a manner that common good is served right socialistic state is there and that can be done when proper health facilities are provided to each and every individual living in the society notion no, no one should be denied of this right right if we talk about article 47 then it is a duty of the state to raise the level of nutrition and the standard of living of the people to improve public health right and you know it is a primary duty of the state isn't it state has a duty to provide you know proper drugs that are you know necessary for curing a disease and at the same time it is a duty of the state to prohibit drugs that are injurious to health so you know according to article 47 when we are talking about the state and the duty of the state to raise the level of nutrition and standard of living and that can only be done when people the citizens of a country will have good health right they are free from diseases right if they are given proper medical care facilities by the doctors by the nurses and they are not denied admission into the hospitals on any basis right maybe uh, they are not able to pay the fees right maybe they don't have any insurance policy at that point of time so that doesn't mean that the doctors or the nurses 
you know, or the medical staff, they will not give admission to that patient, right? On, only when that person is treated and cured of that disease or illness, only then the state can fulfill the vision of, you know, maintaining the standard of living of his people, improving public health. And then only we can raise the level of nutrition, right? So these all are the duties of the state. And, you know, in the previous videos also we have seen that states, you know, they come up with various policies, isn't it? Various schemes to provide good health services to the his citizens, to his people, right? We have uh, various schemes related to women, related to children, right? We have, uh, you know, Mental Health Care Act of 2013, whereby, you know, uh, the state has made certain provisions, whereby it is the duty of, you know, uh, the centers who are taking care of patients who are mentally ill, you know, they are uh, suffering from any kind of mental illness, right? Women, child, men, any gender, there should not be any gender biasness, right? While giving uh, medical facilities to people. Now see, let's talk about Article 48A. See, 48A, it says that, you know, uh, the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment, right? And to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country. Now see, when we are talking about right to health, we cannot ignore Article 48A. Because it is talking about protection and improvement of environment. You know, safeguarding and protecting forest, wildlife in the country. Right to health cannot be separated from, you know, a good environment, a clean environment, right? Because all these things are interconnected. They are mutually linked, right? Uh, right to health also covers clean water, sanitation. So if our environment will be clean, people will be free from various diseases, right? So Article 48A uh, says that it is the duty of the state to protect and improve the environment, right? Because if we will take good care of the environment, if we have you know, proper forest, wildlife, various trees and plants around us, then obviously we will uh, take good oxygen inside us, right? So obviously one will have a good health, right? So it is also mandatory to keep environment clean and green. All right. Now see, uh, we also have, you know, various judicial cases whereby the Supreme Court, for example, in Pashchim Banga case, right, we are going to discuss in the next video. In that case, the Supreme Court said that it is the obligation of the state to provide, you know, medical facilities to the poor. Why? Because it is their right. They cannot be denied of their basic fundamental rights. Okay. Let's talk about Article 51A. See, 51A talks about fundamental duties of the citizens of India. Right. And it is our duty to protect our environment, right, to improve our environment, forest, lakes, rivers, right, to have compassion for living creatures. That means if we will have, if the state is bound to, you know, protect our fundamental rights and we as a citizen are also bound to fulfill our certain duties, right, we should not destroy our environment. We should not, you know, throw away the garbage anywhere on the roads or, you know, uh, whereby people will come in contact and they might fall sick. So it is our duty to take care of the environment, right? So right to health is connected in such a manner that it cannot be disassociated with environment, with proper sanitation, forests, rivers, lakes, right? Okay. So basically, you know, there has to be drawn a balance between preservation of the environment and sustainable development. Right. We have precautionary principles, the polluters per principle, public trust. All these principles are developed by the Supreme Court through various judicial interpretations and cases. All right. So in the next video, uh, we are going to discuss the judicial interventions and how right to health is protected by the judiciary. Right. The guidelines that have been given by the Supreme Court and various other high courts time to time to protect the health of the citizens. Thank you everyone. Take care.